public lands in Utah, they are a window to a natural and cultural history. This series about women outlaws is a story about these lands, places where outlaws roamed and the sanctuaries they used to hide from the law. BLM public lands still provide clues to their activities and help tell these stories. Laura Bullion from Texas became acquainted with several outlaws in her teens, mainly because her father, James Henry Bullion, was an outlaw himself. It was no surprise that Bullion began a relationship with William Carver, a known outlaw and a member of the fierce Ketchum gang. Bullion wanted to join him, but he would not consent at first, and they only saw one another between robberies. While in Utah and on the run from Lawman, Carver became involved with the Wild Bunch gang led by Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. The gang was loosely organized, but they became the most successful bank and train robbers in history. Members of the Wild Bunch called Laura Bullion Thorny Rose, and she was fondly referred to as the Rose of the Wild Bunch. As the gang robbed trains and banks in several states, Bullion was in the mix, but her life with the Wild Bunch is sketchy. She supported the band of robbers by selling stolen goods and making contacts so the gang had supplies and horses. Some believe she even raided banks and trains with the Wild Bunch. Near the Dirty Devil River lies a wild stretch of land called Robber's Roost that is intersected with steep walled canyons and hidden draws. It was a prime location for outlaws to lay low for months at a time. The gang constructed structures within the roost to help buffer them from the cold winters. There, they stowed away items for future use. It's a stunning place of mystery and bolsters the wild history of the American West. In 1900, the gang held up the Union Pacific train at Tipton, Wyoming. Next was a raid on the First National Bank of Winnemucca, Nevada. On July 3, 1901, the Wild Bunch robbed a train in Montana, headlined as the Great Northern Train Robbery. The robbers blew open the express car with dynamite and stole $83,000 in banknotes. Allegedly, Bullion served as lookout and held the getaway horses. Three people were shot during the robbery. The robbers divided the money and then separated into the mountains. In April 1901, William Carver was ambushed and killed by lawmen in Texas. That same year, Laura Bullion and Ben Kilpatrick, another member of the Wild Bunch, escaped the law and operated under the names Mr. and Mrs. Benjamin Arnold. On November 6, 1901, Laura Bullion's running from the law came to an end when she was arrested at the Laclede Hotel in St. Louis, Missouri. She had $8,500 worth of banknotes in her possession, stolen from the Montana robbery. Ben Kilpatrick was arrested some days later. Bullion was convicted and sentenced to five years in prison. She served a little over three years and was released in 1905 for good behavior. She gave up her life of crime and worked as a seamstress and dressmaker. For years, Bullion had been in contact and waiting for Kilpatrick to get out of prison. Ben Kilpatrick was released from prison in June 1911, but on March 12, 1912, Kilpatrick was killed while robbing a train in Texas. In 1918, Bullion arrived in Memphis, Tennessee and became an interior designer. She also became the last surviving member of the Wild Bunch gang. Laura Bullion was the only woman who was a member of the Wild Bunch gang. She was also one woman of, quote, very few who had stayed at Robber's Roost in Utah. Even to this day, the Roost is a difficult place to explore, which makes our BLM public land significant. They help us better understand our history and tell the almost forgotten stories of the past.